Drama City You are plugged in for the Podcast Wrestling Society, where you can get dynamic weekly pro wrestling and MMA related content. Give us a follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at P-O-D-W-R-E-S Society so that you can stay in the know. Faith is the place and the sky is the limit. And if you like what you hear, give us a five-star review and hit that subscribe button. Woo! 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 Now, your host, he is the one and only Troy Adams. It's the podcast, Wrestling Society, where we're going to take the year 1995 and burn it down. I am your loving leader, benevolent host, Midwest Monster, and the podcast Kingslayer, Troy Adams. And joining me today is the Roman Reigns to my Seth freaking Rollins. He's the guy, and I'm the man. Believe that. It's Greg. What up, Greg? Drew. Bro. Dude, I actually heard... uh, I just... I just watched NXT earlier, so sorry. Oh, nice. Yeah, well, I, oddly enough, I was going through uh, like old theme songs. I never heard his uh, his theme song in Evolve. Matt Riddle, for all of you that aren't you know picking up on this, is. Uh, and if you don't know what the hell's wrong with you, go watch it. He's great. Yeah, he's. I haven't seen too much of him actually, but so I need to keep, uh, catch up. But uh, yeah, his his, uh, his Evolve theme is pretty sweet. I will say. Not that his NXT theme is well, bad. No, Ramon and I went, when Ramon and I went live, he was using uh, Regulate. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, his his theme now sounds uh, like a... I can't remember the Snoop Dogg song I was thinking of. It wasn't Regulate. Yeah, but, it's... Uh, no, it's like... I, I can't think of it. Yeah, it's one of the popular ones from the 90s, yeah. Yeah, one of, yeah it sounds, sounds like a Snoop Dogg uh, instrumental. I mean, hell, freaking Sasha Banks's cousins with Snoop Dogg. Why don't they just get him to license one of their songs for him? Well, they got to make sure Riddle's going to be, you know, big first. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah. One of the hottest free agents in the past, like, 10 years. Yeah, <laughs> we don't know what's going to happen with him. <laughs> it's not like he's Brockus or something. Oh, man. Uh, uh, bad memory from the um, 90s. While well, we're on that real quick. Oh, God. I mean, it is part of the news, though. Mm-hmm. Because because of where Riddle came from, um, Frank Mir is going to be at Josh Barnett's Bloodsport oh, event at WrestleMania weekend. Yeah, I had. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about that here in a minute. Uh, oh, great. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I've, 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 I actually it saw. It felt that. like it fit right in. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, which. Well, because Ramona I'll, pointed I'll, out, he's probably replacing Riddle. Like uh-huh. when you really think about it, because that's his spot. Probably. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll definitely talk more about that in a minute because I have some things to say about this and uh yeah but anyway uh real quick before we dive into the news and uh really get serious with all of it here and we will there's a lot of news to get into but we'll breeze through it really quickly because we have not one not two but three big events to talk about today and i use the word big in quotations uh, but none of you. Oh can yeah, see those news will be serious because that because those shows aren't gonna be serious. They're gonna be just humorous. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll be joking around. That's why half the times I put hashtag comedy podcasts on on this when I post it because we're just laughing at this crap most of the time. We're laughing through our pain. But uh, yeah, before we get into all of the the serious talk here, uh, we're gonna take a quick minute to uh, shill all of our stuff like we do every week here on the podcast. First, of course, I want to start off by telling you how you can purchase some great swag courtesy of the Podcast Wrestling Society. Go to redbubble.com forward slash people forward slash pod rest society or shop.spreadshirt.com forward slash podcast dash wrestling dash society. There you can get all kinds of different products with all different kinds of logos and sayings on it from the from the podcast or just the podcast logo and different variations and uh, tribute shirts with the logo on it. We have a bunch of different kinds of cool swag, whether you want something to wear, like a t-shirt, tank top, or hoodie, or a ball cap. We've also got different stuff for around the house or accessories like mugs, travel mugs, water bottles, tote bags, duffel bags, pins, stickers, whatever. It's all available 
at those two websites. That's redbubble.com forward slash people forward slash pod rest society like the social media tag or shop.spreadshirt.com forward slash podcast dash wrestling dash society. And also, it's very important if you want to advertise with the podcast and be a paying member of the society, definitely go to advertisecast.com forward slash podcast wrestling society. There you can see all of the stats for the show, our outreach on the actual podcast and our social media outreach. You can see all the stuff you want to know about uh, what kind of spots we'll, uh, we'll take, whether it be something you send in or whether it be a live read. We'll do 10, 15, 30, 60, or 120 second promos or commercials on this very podcast and get it out to the world, baby. And you can see our rates on there, what we are charging you. Very, very reasonable bottom dollar rates. So go check it out. AdvertiseCast.com forward slash podcast wrestling society. And last but not least, go to WrestlingWithWrestling.com. There you can keep up with all the news that we don't get to cover here between episodes on the podcast. Latest breaking stuff. You can also see rundowns of your favorite shows from any wrestling organization across the world, whether it be big time or independent. And they've got great podcasts like the Andre Corbeil Show, 205 Jive with friend of the show, Jacob Grandi. And they've got much, much more videos, interviews, what have you. Go check it out, wrestlingwithwrestling.com, covering all four corners of the ring. All right, well, now that we're done with the shilling, we'll talk about other uh, great podcasts here on the uh, Drama City Productions podcast network here later on, and shill for other folks. There's a couple of really good ones, by the way. Uh, the the podcast? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I... I don't want to name them. I don't want to play favorites, so I'm yeah, not going to name no, them. There, 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 are gonna, yeah. a f- there are a few that we advertise here. I really enjoy. I've given positive reviews for them on iTunes, and you should too, us and them. I know we have a few loyal listeners here. Guys, if you're listening on whatever what up, you're... Sweden? Yeah, right? Uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan. You get a shout-out. There's, there's some loyal listeners in uh, Ann Arbor. Listen every week. Uh, and, uh, and TJ means that because he is not like Michigan. I know, yeah, for as much as I dog on Michigan, you guys still are loyal listeners. Thank you. Uh, I like you. Like, I'm going to pull an Eric Bischoff here. I love you. But uh, thank you all for listening. And uh, But yeah, if you're listening, whatever means you're using, um, oddly enough, we get a lot of listens on something called Fedora. I don't even know what the hell that is. It's an ugly hat. Uh, well, that, that too. Um, but yeah, just if you can leave us a review, please do. I, I try to do that uh, for, for my favorite podcast, and it really helps us out, and it'll get us more listeners. Thank you very much. And if you can share us, our stuff on social media, please do, at Pod Rest Society for all of our handles, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. But yeah, so uh, that's enough of that. There's plenty of news. You ready to dive into all this, Greg? Yeah, this part, yes. The next part, no. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's get into all of it. Hit, we'll, uh, we'll hit the bell here. All right, that means uh, match is on. Time to get going. Let's start off here. You know what? I was going to... S- Do you want to start off with AEW or kind of leave that for the... For I the mean, end? I feel like that's the biggest news. Yeah, okay. you probably should. All right, well, let's start off with it here. Uh, just I just jotted down a few notes about it. I'm not going to get super in-depth with a lot of the stuff, you know, because there's so much to get into. And it's... I mean, there is... And there's a lot more coming, too. So, I mean, why blow it all now? Right. And it's... As well, it's it's, uh, a lot of rumor and innuendo for a lot of this as well. So, um... Going rumor and innuendo. Sorry, my favorite. (laughs) Speaking of him, and a guy who I guarantee hates your guts now because you cursed his favorite team... Uh, multiple times by by saying roll tide roll on tide. this pod. Yeah, see, you, you curse the hell. For every time you said roll tide, uh, Clemson got a touchdown. <laughs> so you curse you curse the hell out of them, man. Which, by the way, thank you. Uh, I, I don't well, mind. I lost them, 10 bucks. I mean, you know, if that helps. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm sure Conrad lost his mind and threw furniture, but I don't know. Either way. I, I hope he just shut it off and went to bed early because if I were him, I, 
I would have. Yeah, I do too, because I'm kind of fond of him. I like his podcast. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, w- I will. He cried himself to sleep that night. <laughs> but um, yeah, either way, I-, I texted you this, and you know, he he was the one of the hosts for the the AEW like reveal rally in Jacksonville. And I thought, well, of course he was. Yeah. Well, I looked at that and I thought, man, um, does it's not looking good for a season two of something to something else to wrestle with <laughs> on uh, on the WWE Network, and the fact that they've been uh, pimping New Japan hard on the podcasts he's on. So, like, I don't know if you caught that on a like all the way leading up to Wrestle Kingdom, he was pimping New Japan World. So. We might not get that season two, broski. I'm okay with that because yeah. we still got the actual one. Whatever, it's not a big loss. Yeah, it is what it is. So uh, I guess they might. I mean, be- whatever, whatever shows they would have had, they'll just have you know ver- uh, just verbally now instead of video. Whatever. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's fine. I'm I'm fine with all that because most of their you know something else to wrestle um, was just rehashed stuff from the podcast with video to accompany it, which I. I mean, that's not a need to have, you know, it was, it was a toned down version of their podcast. So I didn't really, I mean, it was, I watched, but I, I wasn't like, oh man, I, I can't wait. You know, the best one was when they did uh, AJ Styles and TNA and they had footage to go along with it. So that was the only one that was really like, oh man, I can't wait to watch it. But I guess he was also there because he's, uh, I believe he's going to be hosting Starcast 2 right before Double or Nothing. So I, I think that was him pimping that. The major things we know for a fact so far about AEW is uh, ahead of their rally, I guess billionaire Shad Khan confirmed that he is the lead investor in All Elite Wrestling. So they're going to have a lot of money. However, uh, I mean, will they? <laughs> well, yeah, he's a billionaire. So. Yeah, but how much of that is he dedicating to it? So. Uh, I yeah. don't know. From what I heard, I will say this. From what I heard, he has been a like he's like a lifelong wrestling fan, and he's been wanting to get in the business forever. Well, so he's he a lifelong football fan too, and they can't yeah. get a new stadium, and they suck, so well, they can't yeah. sign anybody. So, I mean, you know, let's calm down on this funding thing here. Well, you know, that's really, not his... really got to think about stuff. Is well, yeah. is that the dad or is that the son? Because it's the whole family. I mean, it's the whole family. So yeah. Well, I think the son. Is uh, like he's not the one that owns the 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 football team. I don't think. I think he owns a soccer team. Um, but no, I, they suck too. Do they? So <laughs> well, you would know. There you, so there you go. I mean, let's ease up on the whole funding thing until we see it. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, we don't know that. I mean, remember Ted Turner was loaded too. Okay, just remember that. Well, he also pumped a lot of money into a failing product until eric bischoff turned it around and so so. too could be the cons we don't know so let's settle down yeah so in theory they're going to be backed by a lot of money in theory so let's uh i mean to your point ring of honor is owned by a very successful (laughs) company media company and they're they're still in closets yeah Uh, i know um msg though i'm excited for i'll be honest about that I, I'm excited at the prospect of Jay Lethal headlining Madison well, Square Garden. That the, part gives me goosebumps because I love him. So Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and it's it'll be great. Uh, a couple of notes on that real quick. Um, the I think the thing where New Japan messed up l- with their first show in America, and I mean, it, did, it was fairly su- successful and everything, the one where they crowned uh, Kenny Omega as the first U.S. champ. Uh, it was fairly successful. However, the problem is, uh, so, somebody pointed out, they said a lot of the American stars didn't get as big a reactions, like, you know, when they shoehorned Billy Gunn in there and stuff like that. Not that those guys weren't over, but that's not... Oh, who... man, Billy Gunn didn't get a reaction. Oh, yeah. crap. Well, I mean, he's, you know, he's a WWE guy and he's got a name or whatever. There are others, too. But they brought up the fact that they're like, that's not who these fans paid to see. They paid to see the Japanese talent that New Japan made you know they're not paying to see oh look it's a wwe guy nobody cared they didn't they they wanted the new japan product whereas new japan thought we have to pander to the u.s audience by giving them what they know then that's not what they wanted that's like you know uh going to you know i i can't even think of a good comparison you know going to 
paying to see a like you going to pay to see a Raider game, and then it's the freaking Rams, you know, in their place. And it's like, hey, wait, whoa, that's the only thing yeah, I can because they're because they're good. <laughs> well, yeah, that one you're like, well, damn it, now I'm gonna get a good game out of this. What the hell? I'm just kidding, but seriously, um, but yeah, the the other I just r- like that it's Billy Gunn, by the way. And <laughs> well, it's not, I don't mean that. not just I don't him. Mean they're, they're, I know, but it's just like I don't even take a crap on him, but Billy Gunn didn't get a reaction. Well, they well, were he's talking the former about... king of the ring, man. What the hell? Yeah, the king of the ring. He had crowns on his little kisses on his shorts. So he's right up there with Mabel, who we'll talk about later. But anyway. Oh uh, good we... God, don't jump ahead. Getting ahead of myself. Uh oh, the other God. the major Spoiler rumor for things to come, sorry. <laughs> the major <sighs> rumor is that like Depending on the moves that All Elite makes between now and WrestleMania weekend and all that good stuff, uh, <laughs> New Japan, I guess, has been fighting really hard. They The talent that has already signed with All Elite, specifically the Elite, uh, New Japan really wants them back. So they're thinking uh, they might work out a deal with AEW after the MSG show. That's the major Oh, rumor. good call. Not at the MSG show. Well, they can't because they're working with Ring of Honor, and Ring of Honor has made it clear. They're like, no, AEW is competition. We're not working with them, which is why they're they're fighting for talent, whereas New Japan isn't really well, a part the, of that. The, those guys are all what was what people were going to the Garden for. Let's not kid ourselves. Well, yeah. but Not to go back on what I just said. I'm looking forward to Lethal being there, but. Yeah, but people want to see Cody and, and Omega and the Bucks. You know, that's. Yeah, but it, it, it is a. I mean, at the end of the day, it really is a Ring of Honor show with New Japan involved. Yeah, but, you know, and that's what it is. But nobody's going for any of those other guys except for those four. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah, yeah, but they're not They're not going to be there. There's no chance of them being there. Ring of Honor isn't going to... Yeah, now I'm starting to question them, so. if, like, you know, people are going to show up now. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's sold... I, I thought it was sold out. No, like, there's lots there? of tickets left. Yeah. Are those, yeah. but are those like secondhand I mean, tickets? Yeah, but that's it, that's okay, why it's well, sold out though to to sell them on there. Yeah, but I'm sure. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't mean like I'm not taking a crap on it, but that's why it's sold out so people can make money off of the marks. Yeah, you know. I, I'm, I mean, I'm sure it'll still sell fairly well if it's not packed, or if if, if well, it'll you know, be packed couple, if it's not sold out. Just give you a, an idea. A couple weeks ago, like well, months ago. The secondary market tickets were like 112 bucks. They're now down to 62. So wow, you know, yeah. So well, it is what it know. is. But I, we'll we'll have to wait and see. But I mean, New Japan wants to be in the Garden, so they're going to do the show regardless. And the, and plus, they're already a part of it, so they can't really pull out. Um, and then Ring of Honor, Diggity. wow. And then Ring of Honor, it's their show, so there's no chance of AEW getting involved in this well could, yeah, just imagine though that the entrance of dalton castle and the boys good lord <laughs> i'm imagining it like i'm excited I, for that i mean honestly i i think i the, mean i think the crowd's gonna blow their crowd i think the out of everybody in new japan i think naito uh i, I guarantee he'll be on the card i i guarantee I, i'm thinking naito will get the the biggest reaction out of anybody uh i'll be honest one of the loudest reactions here was um uh, juice. So, well, yeah, you know, he he's over, man. But uh, but yeah, yeah the, I think he may blow the roof off that place. Actually, perhaps Some people yeah. may laugh at that, but I was there live, and it was loud as hell when he won, dude. Okada too. I at least yeah. it came across on TV well, like that, that. That goes without saying. Yeah, Okada, I Naito, like, and Juice. I feel like are Juice was like. I feel like Juice wasn't like the guy to me, and then like that night in the Cow Palace, my God, it blew up. And I'm thinking Jay, uh, Jay White will get a bigger reaction this time around. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's he's being built up to be the foreign star in the company, besides Juice, obviously. But but Juice is more of a mid-carter at this point. I'm uh, I if I, I'm contemplating going still, like whoever, you know, depends on the Hall of Fame. But, like, right. uh, I, I've decided to be like, hey, I saw Jeff Cobb in front of 115 people in, like, a, <laughs> you know, a high school gym, right. and now he's in the garden. That would be selling my to me. Like yeah, that's, that's what awesome. I want. That's what's selling me on it. It's like, yep. you know. Well, he should be Matanza, but that's beside the point. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. People, <laughs> calm down. Um, we don't talk about that. That's not what this is for, Greg. Anyway. Oh God. 
<laughs> uh, Roy, uh, but yeah, just so, through the mic and slaps you. <laughs> the uh, but yeah, the, the like I said, the 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 main rumor is that uh, they might jump from Ring of Honor to uh, doing a deal with AEW just to get the elite guys back. And the elite has made it clear they want they they don't want to stop working Japan, specifically New Japan. And I guess Chris Jericho's deal, he's the only one. I like, I guess every deal so far is different, and his specifically says he's free to work New Japan. So oh, yeah, because he's gonna take Tanahashi's title. Oh God, I don't want that because he's not gonna he's gonna Brock Lesnar the damn thing. I don't want it. He did that oh, yeah, with the IC the I know, and people still resent him over that. I'm like, dude, don't don't kill him by doing that. Uh, but yeah, as far as the signees, uh, they got MJF, Joey Janela, Pac, Penelope Ford, Britt Baker, and Chris Jericho, besides, obviously, the Elite, uh, minus... The, the Elite. Yeah, uh, minus um, Kenny Omega and um, Marty Skrull. The major rumor... Stay tuned. And the major rumor, uh, it's not confirmed, but uh, supposedly Kenny Omega said he's he he's signing uh, at the end of the month, so... Yeah, and we'll AJ see. Styles is resigning with TNA, so. Oh my gosh. What? Well, we'll see. I don't know because because Kenny Omega also. I don't know. I I don't I don't know what to believe with with Kenny, because I mean he's like the box, a professional troll. So is he le- is he really leaving New Japan? Is he gonna because New Japan's made it clear they want to keep him, so he could make out he could he could have a Jericho deal. He's gonna- He's going to win the Elimination Chamber and face AJ Styles at WrestleMania. Oh, good Lord. I mean, I wouldn't hate that. Um, we'll have to see. Well, I mean, everything's up in the air. So many possibilities. Ramon says there's 0% chance of him signing with AEW. I'm like, how is there a zero? Like, really? Like, Well, it makes more sense for him to go back to New Japan. It does. But, I mean, think about it. It's like there is a big, big chance of him signing with AEW. Because he does that. He can also work New Japan if... That's, you know, I guarantee that'll be in his He's signed with a company that doesn't have a TV deal yet, though. Yeah, but the thing is, Kenny Kenny knows what we don't know. So maybe he knows, you know, deals that are in the making or whatever. Because he is in the freaking elite. <laughs> so I, I would assume if he's signing with them, he's going to have everything lined up and every, he's going to know thing. You know, I, I don't know. But yeah, so we'll have to wait and see. Kenny is the biggest question mark. Uh, at this point with with AEW. Uh, The other quick things here, just to finish up about AEW, uh, they said healthcare will be offered. That could come back to bite them in the butt, and they could figure out real quick why healthcare is usually not offered. Uh, And they made sure to say there will be equal pay for each gender. However, to clarify, uh, so people don't jump down their throats, Brandy Rhodes is apparently their, you know, female liaison, I guess. I don't know. But she said equal pay doesn't mean everybody on the roster gets the same paycheck. She said if you're in if you're a female in the opening match, you're not going to get paid as much as the man in the main event. Said, but if you're a female in the main event, you will get paid as much as the man in the main event. So, which makes sense. This is not communist Russia where everybody gets paid the same, $2 per day. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, anyway. Uh on your point about, you know, New Japan and everything what I was talking about. I guess uh New Japan president Harold May commented on losing talent. He said, "Is New Japan okay?" "Yes, it is." "Is this the beginning of the end? Twitter's getting ahead of itself. Talent will come and go. That's life." We'll <laughs> see. I mean, it's not like they're hurting for talent, but yes, that is a big chunk of their top guys that just said bye-bye. We'll see where it goes. Uh, also, on the part of New Japan, I guess uh, Juice Robinson and Rocky Romero have both signed multi-year deals with New Japan, so they re-upped. Uh, somebody who did not re-up, Kushida, will be leaving New Japan at the end of the month. He says that he is going to NXT, not 205 Live. So thank God for that one. Uh, his his final match in New Japan will be against the uh, IWGP Heavyweight Champion Hiroshi Tanahashi at Road to New Beginning. That should be a good one. Uh, although I mean I love Tanahashi, he's great, but Kushida's much younger, much faster, 
He's going to wear Tanahashi the hell out. <laughs> hmm. We'll see where I it agree. goes. <laughs> uh, New Japan. Pro- it's going to be good in NXT, man. I'm thinking like him and Gargano. Oh, man. Yeah, him and Gargano, him and Ciampa. Uh, I don't know if Kushida speaks English. I never did find that out. Mm, that's not a thing nowadays. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I hear once you move up, to the main roster, that's a big sticking point with uh, Adam or Adam Dunn, uh, Kevin Dunn, and uh, and Vince McMahon is got to speak English, got to cut promos. That's why they're not they weren't super hot on Shinsuke there for a bit because they felt that he couldn't translate well to the audience. Like just because he has an accent, dude. Same with Cesaro. Like they got like really negative on Cesaro because he had an accent. Like okay. Anyway, New Japan has announced some of the details for next month's New Beginning USA show in Nashville, Tennessee. The New Beginning USA tour stop in Nashville will take place at the War Memorial Auditorium on Saturday, February 2nd. Tickets go on sale Tuesday, January 15th at 10 a.m. Central Time. So for all of you listening, that was yesterday. You may have missed out. But... Well, I can't say that because you'll probably get them at a jacked up price on StubHub. <laughs> yep. That's more of a given. Welcome anyway. to my world. Yep. Also, uh, about Tanahashi, he will defend the IWGP world title against Jay White at the new beginning on February 11th in Osaka. Man, not, uh, that's, that's a little earlier for a title shot for Jay White than I was expecting. I called Dominion, but okie dokie. We'll see how that goes. I'm really hoping Jay White wins, but somehow I'm not thinking he will this time around. Might take him a couple tries. You uh, you on the same page with me on that one? Or yeah. 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 Um, also, New Japan will open the G1 Climax 29 in Dallas at the American Airlines Center on July 6th. The total capacity for that place is roughly 20,000 people. That's a huge audience for New Japan to be trying to fill. So this is this is proving grounds, man. Can they fill that big ass arena? It's twenty thousand. That's mm, that's more than the Barclays, a, I think. Might be a stretch now. Never know. I mean, they're really, I mean, they're really, they're really like you know what, putting the pedal to the metal because I mean, there's that. There's they have like three, uh, four shows in uh, America that I know of in the year twenty nineteen this being the biggest one. And then next year's um, Wrestle Kingdom, like we talked about last week, is going to be two days. That's crazy. That's bigger than... Uh, I I, I, I kind of wish... I almost wish WrestleMania would be two days because a seven, hour, seven to eight hour show in one sitting is a long haul. I enjoy it, but it's a long haul in one sitting. That's like... Watching two Lord of the Rings movies back to back. Uh, now yeah, it's to, only once a year, though. So yeah, still enjoy it. Uh, I will be inviting uh, for all of you out there. Uh, Kyle is going to come over. We are going to watch it live this year and deliver our review, hopefully right after the show. So keep your ears out for that one. Uh, WWE has uh, signed Piper Niven. From the May Young Classic, she's known on the indies as Viper. She's going to be going to uh, NXT UK. Here's the story you brought up. Former UFC heavyweight champion Frank, Me- uh, Frank Mir will make his pro wrestling debut at Josh Barnett's Bloodsport on April 4th in New Jersey as part of WrestleMania Week activities. You remember mm. You remember all the build-up to his fights with Brock Lesnar? Yep. You remember how hard he dogged on professional wrestling? No, he really only dogged on Brock, not really professional wrestling. He was—he didn't really say a word about it. He was like wearing a lucha mask in the cage and like acting like, "Oh, you're from the fake world of wrestling or whatever." Like, I've real. never seen that. So, yeah, that was uh, that was their second fight right before Brock cremated him. Uh, but yeah, he was. There was like a, a video of him I like. Gotta... I don't know. I've never seen that, but yeah. he's always watched pro wrestling and always liked it. So, really? I mean, well, maybe it mm-hmm. was like in, in good fun, but I don't know. I, like, I didn't know that, so I took it as he's crapping on wrestling. 
Um, because he put on like a what well, it was almost like a Rey Mysterio mask, like doing sparring and whatever, and letting some guy you know fake beat up on him and whatever. Um, so I don't know. I didn't know that he cared about wrestling, but he's a big sweaty man, pal. So see how this goes. Find him. We'll see how this goes. He's how old is Frank Mir? He's in his forties, isn't he? I think so. Yeah. Good lord, a little. That's like DDP old when he started wrestling. Wow. I love DDP, but he was an old rookie. Uh, speaking of uh, MMA world here, two quick stories. Drug test results have come back negative for all illegal substances for John Junes. For now. Yeah, so there's that. I guess he's clean. Uh, for spe- now. Yeah. Speaking of John Jones, UFC wants to book him versus Anthony Smith. For March's UFC 235. Yeah, why not give John Jones an easy fight? He deserves one. I honestly don't know who Anthony Smith is. He sucks. That's who he is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, there's that. Uh, I think that about wraps up the news, unless I miss something that you can think of. Uh, I think that's. Yeah, I mean, do you want to touch on that spot with that? Or should we leave that alone? <laughs> oh, you. T- well, okay. Re- re- refresh my memory. Who's what's that girl's name? Uh, I forget her name actually. Yeah. Either way, she was in the May Young Classic. Um, uh, blanking on the like, name. Give me like two seconds here. Okay. <laughs> well, she was in the May Young Classic. Uh, I'll give the pretext here. Um, during a match uh, or like an indie match somewhere, I don't know where it is. She and it wasn't uh, Priscilla Kelly. Priscilla Kelly. There you go. Uh, this was not real uh i'll get into what it was here in a second but she there was a spot in the match where she supposedly pulled out a used tampon and shoved it into her opponent's mouth you cannot make this up that's the most disgusting thing i have ever heard and that's coming from a guy who knows about the dick suplex so at least he's not pulling I've seen some... it live quite a few times. Yeah, and he he also pulls a lollipop out of his crotch and shoves it into people's mouths. That's pretty sick as well. Uh, but this, ugh. Um, what it was, was a dyed tea bag. So thank God <laughs> this was a gimmicked thing. Because there for a minute I thought this was legit. And I'm like, what? Who would agree to this? Or was this forced upon them? So... Yeah, thank God, but still, like, ew. Like, did she really want to be known? Like, did she think this one through? It's like, for the rest of my career... Well, it's like, before she went out there, did she honestly sit there and think, for the rest of my career, I'm going to be known as the used tampon girl. I'm cool with that. (laughs) Like, what? (laughs) It's not like... I... uh... (laughs) I don't know, like... I'm the used tampon girl, (laughs) You'd have to get. You'd have to reach some really high heights as a wrestler to overcome that stigma. Like Kenny Omega has, you know, basically erased the whole wrestling blow up dolls thing. So is Kota Ibushi, because they've reached certain heights where it kind of it's like okay, we can forget yeah. about that. This Katie Vick. Uh, Katie Vick. We we uh, you know that was just a blip on the radar. We try try not to think about, but. Uh, yeah, this, I don't know. Like, this is just, ugh. But she's uh, she's owning it, like uh, kind of like Jody, Joey Ryan with his goofy crap. But even his goofy crap isn't, like, some of it's a little gross, but it's not, like, kind of gross, you know? I don't know. Yeah, you Part- don't see anything. Yeah. All right, anyway, that's, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, we talked about that, but... Let's get into something also vomit-inducing, and it's uh, the year 1995 in wrestling pay-per-views. We're gonna I take... thought you said we were going to vomit. We are. Uh, are we? Oh. I thought we were just going to laugh. A little bit of both, but uh, yeah. it's uh... Vomit and laughing. <laughs> it's like high school over again. Holy crap. Uh, get out the sawdust. It's about to happen. All right. Well, this uh, signifies the end of the news. End of match. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick uh, break right now and tell you about uh, some other great podcasts here on the Drama City Productions Podcast Network. When we come back, we're diving into 
our first ECW pay-per-view of the year. So how about that? Ready your butts. We'll be right back on the other end of this break. Drama. Drama. City. Production. Game ticket, $50. Hot dog, $8. Team store item, $25. I told him I can beat him with one hand tied behind my back, with some glasses on with one eye lens out, with some flip-flops on in the rain. Having to listen to someone's dumb sports opinions? Worthless. Some people shouldn't talk sports. For everyone else, there's the Unspoken Podcast, available on most podcasting platforms, and on the web at theunspokensportspodcast.weebly.com. Drama. Drama. City. Small Town Mentality Podcast with your host, Ben. A podcast about nothing and everything. A podcast where we get together with friends, drink beer, and see where the conversation takes us. We don't edit. We don't care what people say. It's small town people with a small town mentality. It gets offensive at times. Lots of swearing and a whole lot of not caring. Available everywhere you get podcasts. You can find us on Twitter at STM Pod, on Instagram at STM Podcast, and on Facebook at Small Town Mentality Pod. We'll see you there. And we are back. Oh man, I know you've been anticipating this one, Greg. Oh, man. This is This is the first one I had to go back and watch to remind myself. <laughs> but everything else I just had like a mental note. I like to think of myself as almost like a wrestling encyclopedia. This one I've, I'd never seen, actually. And, oh, my God, was it bad. This one, I I will say this. I never watched ECW when it was on in the past. I've caught up on a little bit of it since then. You're lying, because I watched ECW with you over Xbox Live on, on WWE. Well, you're lying. I'm not talking about... Are you talking about the the crap they tried passing off as ECW, like with the silver belt? Like, no, like, I'm not talking about that crap. Uh, this, however, I don't know. Like, watching this show was like drinking a bottle of Epicac. Like, you're gonna vomit like uncontrollably for the next like half an hour after it. So, and and while you're drinking it. So there you go. Uh, I don't know. This gave me just thoughts of this this was basically an indie fed that had a, t- a, a a small tv deal that's all it was in my opinion they had a few big names not many and it was in a broom closet of a of an arena let's let's just get into it ecw hardcore heaven 1995 took place can chill. i just before we start i just want to say sorry to everyone up front just there okay yep uh, it took place July 1st, 1995. Total attendance, I can't believe they jammed this many people in that little building. 1,150 people. That's crazy. How is that not a fire hazard? Uh, who said it wasn't? Oh, <laughs> uh, Paul Heyman knew a guy who knew a guy, okay. Uh, and by the way, like this was just, this show really gave, you know how they talked about Paul Heyman was like uh, like a, uh, a Jim Jones type, you know, cult leader whatever that really he he knew how to how to ring the bell and get the dogs to 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 bark yep like this this really freaking proved it like he like he had these people in the palm of his hand just like he could have said anything and they would have cheered him like a god and it was insane thinking about this guy was carrying around a gigantic cell phone just a couple of years before this like managing the Samoan SWAT team yeah, it was. It, you just never know. It was crazy, but anyway, getting into the actual show, we'll we'll get to that part here in a minute with uh with Paul E. But uh, he was not officially Paul Heyman here yet. Uh, they start the show just in the middle of something. There's not really an opening. They just start with Raven Stevie. They they kept switching back and forth between calling him Steve Richards and Stevie Richards. Uh, I will say he had an epic curly mullet though. Hell yes. But it wouldn't would. be nineteen ninety five without that. Hell yeah. But there was Raven, uh, Stevie Richards, and Beulah all coming to the ring. It took me a while to realize that Raven and Richards were not a part of this match. Because they kept talking about how they're the tag team champs and they kept pumping it up. They were not a part of this. 
Uh, this match was shocking to me because it was the Pit Bulls, uh, number one and number two, with uh, Raven, Richards, and Beulah, versus the Dudley Boys with Big Dick Dudley. The Dudley Boys were Dudley Dudley and Snot Dudley. This, yeah, the original, real. the original concept. I have not seen this movie, but uh, I've I've heard of it and I've seen pictures of it. Uh, was it called Slapshot? Name mm-hmm. of the film. This Raven came up with the Dudley Boy gimmick. The entire premise was they were going to be based off of the characters from Slapshot, and these guys looked like the guys from freaking Slapshot. So I was like, okay. I did not know there were Dudleys before uh, Bubba and Devon. But yeah, so they, they weren't even in the company at this time. Uh, but yeah, so that was weird. Halfway through the match, Francine is in the front row flirting with Richards. No one knows who Francine is at this point. She kisses Steve, and Beulah gets into a cat fight with her, and Joey Styles loses his mind. Uh, Raven grabs Richards and Beulah both by the hair and then walks them to the back. The pit bulls get pissed about this because Raven's like their manager slash like leader. They hit a double super power bomb on Snot Dudley, who they kept calling Little Snot throughout the match. Because uh, that's clever. Yeah. Uh, he was clearly the precursor for Spike. Dudley Dudley hits Pitbull number one in the back of the head with uh, with uh, like he does like the Bret Hart elbow off the second rope, and then he puts his brother on top of Pitbull number one. The Dudleys get the win. Pitbull's interview with uh, Joe uh, get interviewed by Joey Styles after the match. They say that they're sick of Raven not having their backs and change is coming. And there's like no easy transitions for any of this. They just do the whole snowy TV thing for a couple seconds and then boom, you're in the next segment. It's hard to keep up with. Uh, this next match, this is what I was talking about with Paul E. Dino Sendoff and Don E. Allen versus Chad Austin and the Broad Street Bully. I had to look up their names because they were, yeah, just jobbers. It was a who the hell are these guys match. The match, <laughs> the match is filled with botch after botch. Chance of you all suck rain down on them. Joey Styles says at one point, I think it's safe to assume this match will never, ever make air. Therefore, I'd like th- to take this time to welcome you all to WCW Slamboree, where nobody can tell the legends from the current ho- headlining wrestlers. <laughs> Just bury. Uh, 911 then comes to the ring with a terrible dub theme, because his actual theme was uh, Frankenstein uh, by the Edgar Winter Group. They obviously can't use that, but it was a just a bad dub theme. Uh, but he comes out with Paulie dangerously. Nine one one choke slams the hell out of everybody, and Paul welcomes them to EC bleeping W. There's a lot of bleeps on this show, by the way. Just letting you know, uh, because apparently it was cool to swear back then. That let him know. Hell yeah! You, that let him know you were edgy. God dang it! That and being big and sweaty. They Spe- got attitude. Speaking of being big and sweaty, uh, next match. Oh, my God. This is the one I just, Hack. I didn't want to get to. <laughs> Hack Myers versus Big Mally. First of all, uh, what the, Hack Myers' nickname is The Shaw. The hell is The Shaw? You know? Uh, no. And they, like, they just kept calling him The Shaw. And I was like, what is that? The crowd chanted it when he did punches. So I guess there's that. Big Mally is like 500 pounds, has a humongous fupa, and he's like, and he, like his whole head is shaved except for like the back of his head. He has a like long ass hair. Like as if he couldn't make himself weirder looking. It's just, good lord. Anyway, Big Mally crushes Hack in the corner three times, power slams him, and then hits a big splash, then goes for an elbow, misses, Hack gets an arm on top of him and gets the pin. This was weird. This all took about ten minutes to accomplish, by the way. I read it in five yeah, seconds. That was far too much. Yeah, it went on forever. 
Big Mally then hits two more splashes after the match and leaves. Uh, why did this drag on so flipping long and only like three moves were done? I just, uh, this is awful. But what was not he awful? He couldn't even, his arms, like, his, uh, that's all I got to point out. His arms didn't touch his chest at all, man. <laughs> like his forearms, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they were so stiff that he was constantly. <laughs> he looked like. It's hard to explain. I just. Okay, well, I'm imagine... not laughing at that. It's not funny. It's just like they marketed this as like a thing. Well, yeah. Well, imagine. Like, you, you didn't see that part, but like, that's a. You know, this is how you stand. You know, oh my God. Well, you remember Charlie or uh, Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory where the girl blows up into a blueberry? That's like, I do. That's Big Mally, if you guys have never seen him. Imagine that, but as a grown man and not purple. This next match wasn't too bad, actually. It uh, involved two good guys that haven't, uh, one of them hadn't quite moved up the card yet. It was Taz with Paulie Dangerously as his manager. Taking on Too Cold Scorpio, who it looked kind of weird. He had like a flat top here and wearing a singlet, like a long singlet. I don't know. But Taz looked weird too. He had a full head of hair. And he had like a longer singlet, like the he actually had legs on it. <laughs> it was more like a Kurt Angle style singlet. It was, I don't know. Oh. It was weird seeing these two. Um Taz no sells the tumbleweed and then hits a Tazplex. Even though he pinned Too Cold Scorpio for the win, Scorpio's foot was on the ropes. Bill Alfonso comes out and says that the match is going to be restarted. He then says that if any wrestler touches him, he's going to shut ECW down. Paul E. says no wrestler will ever touch him as long as he's around because he's not a wrestler and he's going to kick Alfonso's ass. And the crowd just <laughs> like blows for this. Scorpio attacks Taz from behind with a chair. Paul gets distracted, and Alfonso jumps him. Scorpio then puts the chair on Taz and hits the top rope leg drop. Alfonso counts the pin for the win. Joey Styles is incensed. He can't believe it. Screw that Bill Alfonso. I hope he dies. Joey was like the most overdramatic <laughs> commentator of all time. And I love Joey Styles, but like, man, just everything was like hardcore with him. Speaking of him... He's in the ring, saying that uh, their hotline has the latest on Shane Douglas's negotiations with the WWF, and we all know where this goes. <sighs> I've got to love Dean Douglas. Anyway, uh, Douglas... More come. Yeah. Future episodes. God help us. Douglas comes he out... He wins the title. Yeah, for what? A minute and a half? <laughs> anyway, Douglas comes out and he tells Joey Styles off for talking about his business and says that He's the only reason ECW is still alive. A little hard to argue in some instances. Uh, Styles asks Douglas if he's going to sell out, because apparently, you know, going to actually get paid is a sellout. Uh, the crowd chants, Shane is gay. I'm not... That's, uh... Oh. I'm not making this up. These aren't my oh. words. This is what the crowd in Philly chanted. Shane is gay. So there you go. At least it wasn't what apparently what they used to chant at this dynamic dudes that said uh, Shane sucks something that starts with D. He was wearing a WWF shirt too, by the way. I remember that. Oh, okay. I they uh, they blurred it out. I couldn't tell what it was. Yeah, that, it was the old block logo. Well, that makes sense because they said World Wrestling Federation like a bunch of times, and they always bleeped out Federation. So it was World Wrestling, and then bleep. Or, well, not bleep, but just, like, no audio. Uh, as Shane talks, they chant, We want Flair. Douglas then talks crap about Ric Flair and the fans. He continues, and the fans woo for, like, two minutes straight. Douglas says that he's best friends with Cactus Jack for, like, 12 years and says that he's leaving for the WWF. I don't know what the Cactus Jack thing had to do with anything. Uh, woman, who I didn't even know was in ECW, comes out and asks Shane to join her and the Sandman. I didn't know that woman was ever with the Sandman. Did, did you know that? Oh, yeah, that was a huge thing. Oh, I, I just knew her from WCW. I did not know that. Anyway, uh, Douglas insults her, says she's been passed around the locker room more than anything. Uh, she slaps him. He backs her down, and then Sandman chases him off. Cactus Jack then attacks Sandman, and 
Douglas says tonight he's going to give Sandman the beating of his wrestling life. Not, you know, his life, just his wrestling life. So there's a difference. Next up, <laughs> Shane gets better, I promise. Uh, we get Raven and Stevie Richards defending the tag ECW tag team titles against who, Greg? Tommy Dreamer and Tommy Luna. Tommy effing Dreamer. <laughs> That's not the one. To- Tommy Dreamer <laughs> and Luna Vachon. Yes. <laughs> it just, this blew my mind. Uh, when Luna tosses Stevie Richards uh, by his junk, she basically does the ball plex. Uh, Joey Styles says, we'll all be damned. Stevie's got a pair after all. <laughs> <laughs> Raven slaps Dreamer's broken fingers into things, and Dreamer unwraps his hands. Basically, you know what will make my hand feel better? If I unwrap it. That's logical, right? It's idiots. Yep. Raven gets tied uh, up. Uh, what? Second appearance of that epic bullet, by the way. Just got to point that out. Wait, which one? Oh, Steve. Uh, oh, well, yeah. yeah. He's all over this freaking show. It's weird. Uh, Raven gets tied up in the ropes, and Luna hits a superplex on Stevie Richards uh, into a pin. But Beulah runs out and throws powder in Luna's eyes. Stevie then pins her for the win. Ah, oh, man. This uh, was something. Then we get a Todd it Gordon really sighting. Uh, yeah, the. Unfortunately, we get a Todd Gordon sighting. He calls out Bill Alfonso and tells him that he is going to be the referee for tonight's Taipei death match. Alfonso agrees. And then this made me realize, oh, my gosh, I'm about to watch a Taipei death match. It was Ian Rotten. Well, look who's in it, though. At least it's a good. Oh, yeah. Never mind. It's Ian versus Axel Rotten, the, the obese, like m- morbidly obese Ian Rotten who looks like he hasn't seen a gym in his entire life, versus Axel Rotten, who looks like he's seen a gym maybe twice in his life. <laughs> At least Axel Rotten had legit wrestling credentials, believe it or not. Ian Rotten was just a dude eating Doritos on his couch that stepped into a wrestling ring. Anyway, <laughs> Ian and Axel yeah. are both wearing white t-shirts, so you can see the hepatitis all over them when they get cut. Good God. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong? I'm not touching that. Uh, you shouldn't. It's hepatitis. Uh, <laughs> see what I did there? Um, Axel lets <sighs> all the fans feel that he's got glass on his fists and it's real. Uh, Joey Styles says that if you're watching this for entertainment, quote, you're watching the wrong promotion. No kidding. Uh, after one punch to Ian, he starts to bleed a little bit over his left eye, and Bill Alfonso says that he's calling the end of the match because of, of a lack of vision for Ian. Joey Styles goes nuts on commentary, and then the gangsters and public enemy brawl from the back to ringside. The police and security all restrain the four men. There was a lot of cops at this event, by the way. Uh, they restrain the four men. And it appears like New Jack is legit being arrested. And Joey Styles says, something tells me this is not New Jack's first run-in with the law. <laughs> uh, Bill Alfonso leaves with them. Todd Gordon asks if Bill Alfonso left the building, and then he restarts the, the uh, Taipei death match. After these guys have shredded each other up and are nearly drained of all of their bodily fluids, Ian pours a bag of thumbtacks in the ring, because, you know, that's what we needed to amp this thing up. Then he gets backdropped onto him. Axel hits a running splash, pins him for the win. Thank God that is over, because, man, that was sick. I don't know about you, Greg. I'm not one for, like, I, I don't get a hard-on for seeing guys slice each other up with shards of broken glass. Hell no. I hate hard wrestling. I, I, I like some... But when it goes that hard, I'm like, when when you have the words deathmatch in a in a fight, uh, I'm done. Leave me out. We I'm not sure there's a scream match of the year, but yeah, oh God. We randomly go back to Tommy Dreamer and Luna beating up Raven and Stevie Richards all over the ringside area. Raven gets the upper hand, and both uh of them drop Dreamer with an uh, well, uh, Raven drops Dreamer with an even flow on the tag titles. The pit bulls then come out, and Raven tells them to super bomb Luna. They refuse, and Richard's pie faces bull, uh, pit bull number one. 
Raven hits Pitbull number two with a chair in the back, and the Pitbulls fight back and lay out Raven and Richards. They then go to Superbomb Richards, but the Dudleys, oddly enough, come in and jump the Pitbulls. Raven goads Dreamer. They brawl. Then Luna attacks Richards. The Pitbulls throw the Dudleys through the entrance wall, which is just like thin, uh, like thin wood. And then Richards and Raven get the same treatment. The baby faces fight back, and then the Dudleys attack them again before getting beat up, and they run off. And uh, this was just a big brawl that went nowhere. We then get the world title match, which for some reason didn't close the show. But Well, look what is closing the show. Yeah, we'll get to that. This one. Will this, we? Yeah, unfortunately. The Sandman with Woman defends the ECW World Heavyweight title against Cactus Jack. Cactus has barbed wire wrapped around his right forearm and fist, which shows you where this one is going right out the gate. Sandman stands outside of the ring after the bell rings, like caning the ropes and laughing like a paste-eating idiot. Oh, man. <laughs> He's like, oh, man, look at my stick. <laughs> Cactus is outside at one point. Sandman takes a, a running leap over the top rope, not touching that rope at all, and canes Cactus on his way down. That was actually pretty impressive. Uh, at one point, Sandman wraps barbed wire around his entire body and repeatedly runs into and lands on Cactus Jack. Ugh. Uh, Cactus eventually pulls the shirt up and the barbed wire up uh, around Sandman's face. Puts a chair over him and leg drops him off the second rope, but only gets a two count. ECW is nuts. Uh, woman canes Cactus. Cactus shoves her down before uh, breaking Sandman's cane. Sandman knocks Cactus down, then falls into the ref. And then Shane Douglas runs in and elbow drops the ref, then hits a pile driver on Sandman. He grabs a mic and says, "Keep." Uh, I think he. Me- I want to say he messed up here. He says, keep your friends closer and your enemies right by your side. <laughs> I don't think that's how that goes. But anyway, he then hits Cactus Jack. Yeah. Uh, good job, Shane. He then hits Cactus Jack between the eyes with his cane, allowing Sandman to pin him for the win. Douglas then says, ECW can kiss my ass goodbye. Ah, uh, man. Yeah. Uh, Todd Gordon then comes out and... Uh, Shane Douglas uh, says that if Todd goes down on one knee and begs him to stay, that he'll stay. And then uh, Gordon fires Douglas while using the F-bomb because got to get that in there. And then Douglas punches him and then rips his clothes off for some reason before punching a referee and then body slamming Todd Gordon. Another referee and two jobbers eat it as well. Then finally 911 runs in and choke slams chain straight to hell. Raven talked about 911 before. He was like, dude, when he was coming in and just choke slamming people on the random, he was like, that was great. He was hugely over. He's like, once you actually put him in the ring and started giving him matches, like that just like blew it because he was terrible. And that damn bell had a ring. Yeah, basically. But now we go to the main event, and mercifully this is over. I will say this main event wasn't awful. Uh it was the public enemy, Rocco Rock and Johnny Grunge versus the gangsters, New Jack and Mustafa Saeed. These two guys, or these these guys just brawl all over with Mustafa and Rocco headed for the stage and New Jack sticking in the ring with Grunge. They uh, just hit each other with everything that isn't nailed down, including a mailbox with the words EAT, S-H-I-T, on the side. <laughs> of course, all four men bleed. Public Enemy looks like, it looks to me like ICP minus the clown paint, only they're both Violent J. They're using baseball bats, Croquet mallets, tables, fans, computer keyboards, and more. Just beating the tar out of each other. The match ends with Rocco Rock coming off the top rope with a croquet mallet to the back of Mustafa's head, getting the pin. The celebration didn't last long because the gangsters jump Public Enemy outside the ring and they brawl to the back. But then Public Enemy then comes back out to the ring to wave their hands with the while their uh, their song plays. And just a crap ton of sweaty marks get in the ring that have the look. And they they all dance with Public Enemy. Seriously, if you have to watch one thing on the show, watch this. Look at, just, 
count the looks, bro, in that ring. It was just uncountable. So many. <sighs> Mercifully, this just ends. Thank God. You're not going to talk about the iconic moment? What iconic moment? About them dancing? What about it? They waved their hands. That's how it is. I mean, just, it's like, that's one of the greatest moments in ECW history, Paul said. Yeah, well, I, I said they were all waving their arms, a bunch of sweaty marks well, got this, in the ring. Yeah, I, I, I think it look. deserves more than that. It does not. <laughs> well, I mean, if you want me to put it over, I, I did say if you have to watch one thing on the show, make it that, because just only for the fact that I just want everybody to see just all the sweaty neckbeards getting in the ring with all their fupas flopping around. I know I just buried everybody that was at that show, but seriously, like, tell me I'm... Watch this back. Tell me I'm wrong. Dare... I dare you. Ah. That's probably the worst piece of crap ever. Well, that, that's a crowded field, Greg. So... <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the worst pieces of crap ever, let's get into uh, WCW's Bash of the Beach 95, shall we? The, uh... And this was actually better than that, but... I mean... They didn't exactly set the bar. The bar was on the floor. The, hell, the bar might have been in the floor at this point, and they just kind of, like, walked over it. <sighs> the tagline for the event was, an event so hot, they had to put it on the beach. Yes, this, yeah. this was physically on Huntington Beach. So, yeah. the See, I don't get it. The, the official attendance that they have listed was 9,500. I, I, I don't know if that's accurate. Especially from the aerial views. I mean, I, I guess you can't tell it's a beach. But, whatever. Well, what did Uncle Dave say? I think he was the one that said 9,500. I don't know. Usually he's the one. So He's the authority, Greg. Uh, this took place July 16th, 1995. Uh, there are some hot-ass chicks in bikinis of all ages. And some sweaty-ass mullet-having dudes on that beach. Slim Jim. Sweaty. Slim Jim is all over this event, by the way. Like, they, to the point of where they don't call it WCW Bash of the Beach, this is Slim Jim's ba Bash of the Beach. So there you go. Uh, video package claims that Mang has, or was raised to protect the emperor of a Far East nation. What the hell? <laughs> like, I get suspending disbelief, but like, what the actual hell? I mean, it was a cool video package, I guess, but it's it was weird. Mean Gene Okalin. Uh, was wearing a red polo and some white shorts and a ball cap. He looked goofy. Uh, but Shivani and Heenan didn't look much better. Heenan had his his uh, his khakis pulled up over his belly button. So there's that. Uh, but anyway, Mean Gene is interviewing Sting, who looks like he hasn't changed since the Great American Bash. His tan, by the way, is in freaking credible. So. Spoiler. He's over. Yeah, sp spoiler. That's why he went over here. Uh, <laughs> Eric Bischoff would appreciate that. Sting says that Meng may know seven different forms of karate, but he knows seven different forms of crazy. And, crazy. And then Sting says that his parents are sitting ringside because, well, this is the event to do that. <laughs> anyway, Sting defends the U.S. title against Meng who has Colonel Robert Parker in his corner. Because, uh, and, and Colonel Robert Parker, I was like, man, why are you wearing all that hot-ass get-up, like, in the beating hot sun? Anyway, the camera guy keeps taking shots of young women in bikinis. I don't mind. Michael Buffer makes the opening announcements in an all-white suit. It looked weird. Sting is announced as, quote, the star of Thunder in Paradise. Was he? I thought that was Hogan. Uh, he was one of the bad guys. No. Oh. Really? Sting played a bad guy? Wow. How about that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, with uh, Meng only having his feet taped, I wonder how hot that ring mat is. I looked it up, by the way, just for research purposes. It was 86 degrees for a high that day. So imagine that beating down on that ring mat all freaking day on the beach. That had to be hot as hell. Uh, Tony Giovanni points out that the uh, that uh, Baywatch is filming segments for their show to include WCW. Oh, joy. The first half of the match is back and forth. At the halfway point, Meng takes control. Sting goes for the stinger splash, but he gets kicked right in the face, right out of midair. That was crazy. 
Uh, the brain slips in, says, man, what uh, was Meng jobbed? Uh, or he says, uh, man, was Meng jobbed on this or, or what? And he says, uh, or was he robbed? <laughs> then Sting does a weak schoolboy roll up. For, yeah. Uh, Sting, uh, Sting does a schoolboy roll up for the win. It was a, a weak ass schoolboy. Meng jumps. I think he got one leg, if I remember right. Yeah, basically. Uh, Meng jumps him from behind after this. Sting rolls out, and Road Warrior Hawk comes out for a stare down with Meng. Gotta see more of that. I gave it two and one fourth Uncle Dave's. It was average. Oh, man. This was the match of the night right here. Uh, coming up, Mean Gene Oakland interviews the Renegade and Jimmy Hart backstage. Yay. <sighs> Jimmy Hart claims that every wrestling magazine is talking about the Renegade. Yeah. Sure. We'll go with that. And then the Renegade does his best slash worst Ultimate Warrior impression by breathing heavily and shouting nonsense into the mic while shaking his head. And then he just runs off. God. I'm going to say this. This was... to speak all the dead, but it was brutal. Yeah. And, and I'm going to say this right now. Fair warning. This was not by any this, this was the worst match of the night i'll say that or, well tied tied for the worst match of the night with the next one i took the most notes on this one and you'll see <laughs> you'll see why here here in a moment now well, this uh this match was for the uh world television title it was the renegade with jimmy hart defending against mr wonderful paul orndorff i just need to point out first how stupid it is there's an r on his bicep uh yeah <sighs> And an R on his face. Like, I'm sorry. I know. I mean, that's dumb, too. But the one on the arm is just like, wow. Yeah, I thought that, too. I was like, they couldn't come up with a logo or just like they were like, F it. We'll put an R. Like, OK. Oh, man. Hey, Renegade, I saw the R, man. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <sighs> anyway, Orndorff has the most generic rock music entrance theme of all time, by the way. I just want to point that out. A hot chick in a bikini is shown in the crowd, and Brain stops in, like, mid-sentence and shouts, Wow! And Shivani also says, Wow! I hope Lois wasn't watching. Uh, Brain says Renegade is, quote, uh, wound like a cheap watch. Uh, whatever. Mm, what does that mean? Uh, just that he's wound up and crazy. I don't know. Again, I feel sorry for Orndorff as it looks like he's wrestling a cement mixer, as I said last week about uh, Arn Anderson. Besides ripping off his uh, mannerisms, it also appears that Renegade is ripping off the Ultimate Warrior's stiffing tendencies. The crowd actually chants wonderful, wonderful multiple times during this match. Was that loud? Uh, it, was, it was pretty loud. Uh Keep in mind... No, was it allowed? Sorry. No, all, all, all loud. Uh, I don't know. Uh, well, just uh, so all of you know, Orndorff was the heel. I, like, if this needed clarifying. Renegade was supposed to be the big deal babyface television champ. Nah. And these were, like, casuals on this beach. These weren't, like, you know, these were, like, walk-ups and stuff. This wasn't, like, you know, hardcore fans that knew this stuff coming in. Like, these basically just cheered the baby faces and booed the heels. Not this time. They all recognized, hey, the guy in the face paint, he sucks. So, <laughs> at one point, uh, Ord er, yeah, Ordorf throws a handful of sand into Renegade's face uh, in, right in front of Nick Patrick. Nothing is said or done. They, he lets it go. Uh, Brain says, there's a lot of things that get by Nick Patrick. He's not lying. Uh, Renegade can't even run the damn ropes properly. He looks like a wounded horse trying to run. He hits two front drop kicks that were bowling shoe ugly. Uh, the Renegade reverses a vertical suplex into a, quote, bridging back suplex. I say that because there was no bridge. He basically just laid down. He pins Orndorff off of that move for the win. Orndorff got his shoulder up, but it wasn't seen. Uh, man, uh, Paul attacks renegade after the match and the crowd explodes <laughs> they love it he pile drives <laughs> renegade but he hesitates to drop him because the renegade can't even position himself properly so Ordorf was trying not to kill this dude the crowd blows yet again when he hits the pile driver 
Behind Orndorff's back, Renegade does the Undertaker sit-up, drawing booze. Then he climbs to the top rope and hits the ugliest crossbody ever, and then leaves to a chorus of boos. My notes? Boo! No buys! One Uncle Dave. This was awful. A whole one? Yeah, I just because Orndorff tried. But God, this sucks. Renegade blows. Blue, whatever. Not to speak ill of the dead, but God, he was bad. Uh, why, why did WCW say, you know, we need a replacement for the Ultimate Warrior, preferably one that also sucks at wrestling? <laughs> yeah. A promo plays where in the Dungeon of Doom, the Master gives the Taskmaster, quote, a warrior, and it is Kamala. Because why not? Yep. Kamala comes out smacking his belly, making stupid faces. Then he rubs his head on the master, looking like, oh, man, where's my paste? I'm hungry. <laughs> he had, like, just the dumbest freaking face. Uh, then we go to Mean Gene interviewing an angry Jim Duggan. Says he's done playing by the rules. Good for you. Next we get this freaking thing. It was Kamala with the Taskmaster versus Hacksaw Jim Duggan. By the way... Uh, it's no longer Kevin Sullivan. He's just the Taskmaster now. Uh, who in the hell wants to see this match in 1995? Hell, who wanted to see this match in 1985? These were my exact who wanted, things. Who wanted to see this match? Yeah. Kamala makes the idiot Duggan look even dumber by asking for a hug, and Hacksaw has to think about it before getting thumbed in the eye. He deserved it. Uh, Taskmaster gets Kamala fired up by pointing at Duggan and yelling, Hulkamaniac! That made me laugh. Kam <laughs> Kamala utilizes an armpit claw at one point. Gross. Duggan hits the three-point stance clothesline, but Kamala drops about a half a second before Duggan even touches him. The referee and Duggan get distracted by the Taskmaster, and then the Zodiac runs in with Kamala's mask. He blasts Duggan in the back with it. And Kamala pins him for the win. God, my notes, I said, this match blew and was not exciting whatsoever. One Uncle Dave. Next, cool. we get to, yeah, let's just move on quickly. Next, we get to Mean Gene Okerlund interviewing the Macho Man, who's wearing a custom Slim Jim hat and t-shirt. Yet again, they drill home that Slim Jim is sponsoring the show. Gene gets cut off by DDP's theme. Because, you know, if you're going to cut off Mean Gene Okerlund with something, it might as well be that. By the way, at this time, DDP, in my opinion, was known for his awesome theme song in WCW. This was not that theme song. This sucked. I think this is the one they have in the game. Uh, I don't remember. This one was like, had a revving motorcycle, and then him going like, have mercy, or something like that. I'm like, the F? Anyway. DDP comes out in the ugliest singlet of all time with the Diamond Doll and Max Muscle. For those of you that don't know, Max Muscle is a gigantic, roided-up dude who is apparently his bodyguard. Uh, he's taking on Dave Sullivan. Yay. The Dave Sullivan. Yeah. A little kid in a Hulk Hogan t-shirt gives the Diamond Doll a bouquet of flowers, and DDP backs her into the corner and shouts at her and, like, smacks her with the flowers multiple times. This gives Dave Sullivan the opportunity to jump DDP from behind. Dave gets distracted by looking at the doll, allowing DDP to get the advantage. Max Muscle distracts Sullivan later on in the match, allowing DDP to hit the diamond cutter for the win. Notes, I said, this was just a lot of clotheslines and running into each other. <laughs> Boring. One and three-fourths Uncle Dave's. It's just not good. Next we go to uh, Mean Gene. Bad. Exactly. Mean Gene is in the back again, interviewing the Harlem Heat with Sister Sherry. Sherry calls the Nasty Boys the Nasty Girls. And I can't tell if Booker and Stevie are seeing the Blue Bloods or the Blue Balls. Sounds the same. Uh, I, I, honestly, I listened to it back. I still can't tell. I, it sounds like they were calling them the Blue Balls. Uh, Booker, the Blue Balls. <laughs> I swear to God. And then uh, Booker says that it's about to be on like a steaming pot of neck bone that's been cooking for three days. I don't know what that means, but I'm guessing it's bad. Or maybe good. I don't know. I, I, I don't speak Harlem or Houston. We'll look that up later. Yeah, the Urban Dictionary. Anyway. 
Uh, Harlem Heat defend. Apparently, they're the tag champs again. I missed that, and they didn't show how they won the belts. Uh, they are defending against the Blue Bloods and the Nasty Boys in a triple threat tag team match. This match takes two years to get going, with tons of walking around and jaw, jaw jacking. Like, good lord. Bobby Heenan says, the Nasties shouldn't be wrestling in this hot sun. They don't keep well. <laughs> I pop. I can argue that. Yeah. Uh, Heenan says to imagine the parade at Buckingham Palace if the Blue Bloods get the w- uh, get the win and win the titles. I thought it would have been funnier if he would have said Birmingham Palace since Bobby Eaton's from Alabama. You know, I was just throwing that in there. Anyway, uh, Regal <laughs> gets <laughs> Regal gets dropped. Booker T gets slammed on top of him. Knobs splashes him, and then Sags pins him. But the ref counts Booker on top of Regal for the pin. And Harlem Heat retains. It was confusing. My notes, I said, what an ugly cluster of a match. Commentary was confused the whole effing time. The Blue Bloods looked like pure crap in this match, which these guys are really good, so that's saying something. One and three-fourths Uncle Dave's. This match sucked. Uh, And then the Harlem Heat... I'm going to disagree with that. Did you like this? No, I said I'm not going to disagree oh, with that. Oh, I thought you said you were. I was going to say, that, like, uh, really? <laughs> oh, man. But uh, Harlem Heat gets interviewed by me and Gene on the uh, entryway. And uh, when he tells them that uh, Bunkhouse Buck and Dirty Dick Slater ah, got Dirty Dick in three weeks in a row. Uh, giggity. Oh, my God. That was the worst thing you ever said. <laughs> it was. It really was. I didn't even think about that. Anyway. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, Bunkhouse Buck and Dirty Dick Slater have earned a shot at the tag team titles next. Uh, they say that they're not, quote, closet champions, whatever that means, and they will defend the titles against any team at any time. Uh, next, Mean Gene is with Ric Flair. Flair takes us back in time, saying that Elizabeth saw Flair and, quote, just like the Baywatch babes, she broke down, had to have it. Gene asks... <laughs> Gene asks if she rode Space Mountain, and Flair said, You know she did! Flair Flair says that Macho has three things to remember. Number one, I swept Elizabeth off her feet in her finest hour. Number two, I jack-slapped your father because he got in my way. And number three, there is only one jet-flying, limousine-riding, kiss-stealing, wheel-and-dealing son of a gun that's kissed all the girls and made them cry. And that's the nature boy. Mean Gene tells him that he needs to get his own 900 number. <laughs> this interview, Mean Gene. This interview, by the way, was great. I just, I love this combo of Mean Gene and Ric Flair. It's fantastic. They then bring the Baywatch babes out, flanked by security so that they don't get groped on the way to the ring. Good call. And Bobby Heenan stands up from his chair to see them, and Tony Schiavone loses it laughing. Oh, man. No, I mean, who wouldn't? Right? I, I, I can't disagree. This next match was tied for the best match on the show. Uh, it wasn't as good as their last encounter, but it was still good. It was Ric Flair versus the Macho Man in a lifeguard match, which was a lumberjack match. Although everybody had to dress really stupid. So I guess that was a stipulation. Tony Giovanni claims that there are, quote, hundreds of thousands in attendance. Sure. Uh, These two actually utilize the stipulation getting tossed outside frequently. However, it doesn't look silly and forced. Macho Man hits a flying axe handle, and Arn Anderson gets in, getting knocked down. Flair goes outside, distracting the ref, and Arn Anderson gets in and hits Macho with a DDT. It's only a two count, though. Uh, Macho finally hits a flying axe handle uh, into a body slam, followed by the flying elbow drop for the win. All the baby faces come in and celebrate with Macho Man, and the heels pull Flair out of the ring to escape. Savage then goes to celebrate with the Baywatch beauties. By the way, this is uh, in one month, in two companies, we get two different Lumberjack matches. Uh, this was the better of the two, hands down. <laughs> then again, the other one... not by much. Yeah. I mean, not that the other one didn't suck. I, I shouldn't say that. But, I mean, come on, it's Ric Flair Macho Man. Uh, my notes, I said, not their best match ever, but it was pretty good, and by far the, well, by far the best match on the card up until this point. I gave it three Uncle Daves. 
might have been the best match on the card, period. But the main event was not terrible. Uh, they show a video package for Big Bay Invaders Roadkill Tour while playing Dean Malenko's theme over the video at one point. Uh, I mean, Dean wasn't there yet, but it would soon be his theme. Tony Schiavone... Uh, I think it's a production theme. Yeah. Tony Schiavone teases the video, saying Roadkill Tour about 500 times. Uh, mean Gene interviews Vader backstage, who comes in frame just throwing crap. Vader says that while Hulk Hogan's butt was tanning, he was growing up in the inner city L.A., fighting for survival. He calls Hulk Hogan brother about 5,000 times. He was worse than Kevin Sullivan with it. But uh, oh, what is it? What is it with like WCW with just like killing hometowns? Like last pay per view, it was like, uh, oh, the hometown boy in 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 Ohio, Flying Brian. Even though we bill him from Hollywood, and then this time it was, you know, from the Rocky Mountains, Vader. But he's really from inner city LA. Like, what the hell? Oh, it's funny. It's the audience just can't even hear it either. Only home can. So. Right. What's the point? Yeah, I know. Uh, after teasing Collision in Korea, we go to Mean Gene Okerlund interviewing Hulk Hogan, Dennis Rodman, and Jimmy Hart. I was unaware that Dennis Rodman was in WCW at this point. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, Hogan, er, Hogan calls Dennis, quote, Rod the Bod multiple times, and he says that they came riding in on Harley Davidson's. Hulk Hogan says that he's going to press slam Vader's, quote, wart-infested body over the cage into the ocean where the Great Whites are waiting and they're going to rip him apart. So he's a babyface advocating murder or... Sharks near the ring. Well, Well, my CW actually does that. Well, no, Greg, he's (laughs) going to press slam him all the way from inside the cage all the way into the ocean. Because that's how strong he is. Right. Yep. Anyway, Hogan says God, that... this promo just sucks. <laughs> it was a silly Hulk Hogan 90s promo. Like, what do you what do you expect? Oh, here's another one. Hogan says that Rod the Bod will be outside the cage door. And there wasn't really a door. It was just like a section of cage. But anyway, you know, semantics. Uh, but he says he's going to be waiting out there. And if anyone tries to interfere, he's going to turn their face into hamburger meat. Yay. So he's going to maim them. Cool. Man. <laughs> he's just the worst oh, baby man. face ever. <laughs> What's going on here? And people cheered for this. I'm going to kill you, but cheer me, though. Right? Uh, eat your vitamins, say your prayers, and if somebody's mean to you, murder them, brother. Main event time. Hulk Hogan is defending the WCW World's Heavyweight title against Vader. Hogan's got Jimmy Hart and Ro- uh, the Dennis Rodman with him. I guess Rodman at this time was on the uh, Spurs. Just a side note. Yep. There are some serious mic issues going on during the entrances because it keeps sounding like someone's getting feedback and like smacking their mic. Hogan comes out with the cast of Baywatch. Instead of going through the door, Hogan climbs up the side and over the top. Then he starts off being a heel by choking Vader with his ripped shirt and stuffing his bandana in his mouth. Because, you know, that's how baby faces act. Hulk Hogan <laughs> Hogan puts Vader's helmet on and then taunts him with it. Vader nails two Vader bombs for uh, near falls. Inevitably, Hogan gets Vader's mask off again. <laughs> because, he's, you know, the mask has got to come off, brother. Uh, Vader leaps so off. You can all see his face. Well, yeah. Because you couldn't see it before through the straps. Um, but, uh, yeah, Vader, like, Jumps off the top rope with a senton. Hogan moves. Vader lands weird on his shoulder for some reason. I think that's the spot that supposedly ruined his shoulder. Am I correct? I I think that's it. Hmm. Because that I never heard that. Yeah, because that that was why uh, he went in W because he went in WWF after this with nagging shoulder injuries, and that's why he came in and like was off TV. For like a long ass time shortly after he debuted, which was stupid, but whatever. Uh, uh, yeah. When uh, when Hogan teases a body slam, the crowd erupts. He then hits a body slam and sells his back. After Vader hits a splash off the second rope, Hogan no sells it and hulks up, beating the tar out of Vader. He drops Vader with two big boots, and then the Taskmaster, Taskmaster, easy for me to say, and the Zodiac run out. 
course, we need more Ed Leslie on this show. Uh, they try to get in the cage, but Dennis Rodman grabs a chair and chases him off. He did not, in fact, turn their faces into hamburger meat. Hogan nails a leg drop. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hogan nails a leg drop, stomps on Vader's face again because that's a baby face move, then hits another leg drop. And then Vader stops him from leaving the cage, but then Vader gets punched off the top rope and Hogan climbs out. My notes, I said, while not beautiful, it was a pretty good match. Probably their best. Uh, you know, so what's that really saying? I give it three Uncle Dave's. Not hateful. So if you have to watch anything on the show, the last two matches, and that is it. Just skip the rest of it because it was awful. I'm going to skip it all. That or that. Uh, as soon as Hogan's theme hits, literally everybody walks, like everybody leaves, like they had to catch a bus. Shivani signs off and tells Heenan, good broadcast, Brain, good telecast. And then Flair runs into the cage and flips out on Vader. Tony asks, are we, are we getting this on tape? We're off the air. Hey, Christine. <laughs> and he's just like talking to people. Heenan says, how the hell are we going to get out of here? And then... <laughs> That's happened quite a few times. Yeah, this was just lovely. Uh, Vader backs Flair into the corner, and Arn Anderson jumps Vader. Flair <laughs> runs away, climbs the cage, and then... He literally climbed the side of the cage and then just jumped. Like, he was literally running for his life. I, I was like, damn, that's a big drop. Uh, Anderson runs away as well. Vader gets in the camera and challenges Flair and Anderson to a two-on-one handicap match. And then Tony asks the time before signing off and says, are we actually going off the air this time? Are we, Christine? And then he finally says goodbye and they roll credits. God. So they've done this quite a few times. I thought it was just on the metros I watched. Nope. And I want to, like, I don't know if this was a shoot. Bro. Bro, 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 bro. I don't know. It's weird. Yikes. But anyway, that was awful. Just really bad. Uh, it doesn't get much better because we're going to take a promo break. On the other end of this break, uh, we're going to run through this one. It is WWF's In Your House 2. From Nashville, Tennessee. My God. Uh, this honestly was the whitest show I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and it wasn't in WCW. Imagine that. Like, I've seen some pretty white Jim Crockett promotion stuff. Like, they had a show called Bunkhouse Stamp Stampede. So, that's saying something. But this might have taken the cake. But we'll get into all of that. We're going to take a quick promo break. On the other side of this break... In your house, too. Yay. We'll be right back. Drama. Drama. City. Productions. Dot com. Hey, I'm Morgan Danielle. And I'm Luco Blaze. And you can check us out on www.themetalexperience.com for the latest interviews featuring punk and metal bands from the Chicago area. And on our website, you can read interviews and reviews from bands all over the world in our blog section, either on Reviews from the Crypt or the Let's Chat Q&A sessions. Also, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And remember to keep it metal. Woo! Drama City Productions presents... Hey, it's Ben here, host of the Regular Stories Podcast, a podcast where I interview interesting people about their lives. These are not celebrities. They're not the elite. These are regular people, and these are their stories. You can follow us on Facebook at Regular Stories and on Instagram at Regular Stories. We are everywhere that you can get a podcast. We are on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, just about everywhere else. Look up Regular Stories Podcast. All right, I guess we're saving the uh, best for last here in our last event. Um, I don't know. They're all pretty bad. Uh, but anyway... WWF In Your House 2 took place July 23rd, 1995 at the Nashville Municipal Auditorium in Nashville, Tennessee. Total attendance, 6,482. Poor unfortunate souls. Uh, the commentary team is back to Vince McMahon and Jerry Lawler. Both are dressed like cowboys. This uh, Nashville. Yeah, this was a sight to see. Uh, Lawler has his freaking crown slipped on over his black cowboy hat. 
God. Apparently all the staff is dressed like freaking cowboys. This was so weird. Opening match. The one, two, three kid versus the roadie. Yay. Uh, kid jumps roadie in the aisle, but roadie gets control once they're in the ring. They cut away at one point to show that Jeff Jarrett is not watching this match. He's not alone. Uh, roadie does an ugly pile driver off the second rope that looks like it about killed the kid. He pins him for the three count. Uh, I said, oh. not a terrible match. Some good moves and a legit looking ending because it legit looked like it killed him. I gave it two and one fourth Uncle Dave's. It'll be better in three years when they're in DX. Yeah, right. Uh, Rhodey then goes up to uh, Double J's stage and does a mic check. Now to the back with uh, Todd Pettengill interviewing the Million Dollar Corporation. By God, does freaking Todd Pettengill look goofy in a damn bolo tie? <laughs> but uh, everyone talks for Sid and then finally Sid talks saying that Diesel is in his asylum and then now they're using their uh, their uh, merchandise shiller Barry Dedinsky he's in Diesel's locker room poor guy uh, all the baby faces are apparently partying together he's also pimping the events t-shirt because why not and he tries to get an interview with Shawn Michaels and Diesel. Shawn Michaels insults his hair, saying it's a wig. And then Diesel asks if it's a Persian rug. Then he sends it back to the commentary. Yeah, oh. Persian rug. One size fits all. 20 by. <laughs> God. Uh, act now. Call one uh, call one nine hundred. Blah blah blah. Ah, good lord. Uh, King, this next match, man. Oh yes, the tag match. King Mabel. Oh, yeah. And Sir Mo versus Razor Ramon and Savio Vega. Good lord. Uh, <sighs> Razor is still wearing his rib tape, but he takes it off and throws it at Mo to start the match. Mo gives a moonsault to Savio Vega and nearly lands on his freaking head, and he misses. Lawler says, Don't do that, no Mo. <laughs> uh, I laughed. Uh, Savio and Mo tumble outside of the ring. Mabel splashes Razor in the corner, hits a belly to belly, and gets the pinfall win. Note, uh, I said Razor and Savio somewhat saved the match because the other two sucked. Two Uncle Daves. Uh, we cut away, jumping forward, I assume, because a band played, I guess. They had some country band there, so I think they played a song. That, of course that, they did. Yeah. They played a song that they weren't able to uh, broadcast on the network. Then Todd Pittengill is now up on the stage with his, with the band, and he keeps getting the drummer to do different beats for him. And this goes on forever. It was goofy as hell. Then he sends it to Do uh, Doc Hendricks in the babyface locker room for some reason. Hendricks asks all the babyfaces if they're going to take the buyout from Ted DiBiase, and they all say no. Uh, this is where I wrote... Who the hell is Man Mountain Rock? Uh, his gimmick was performing a guitar, uh, performing with the guitar in the ring before the match started. It would be, get all dark, and they put a spotlight on and perform a solo. It was so stupid. Cool. So he was a crappier, fatter version of Elias. Gotcha. <laughs> Dude, that would have been awesome if back then they were like, ladies and gentlemen, Man Mountain Rock. <laughs> yeah, that would have been awesome. <laughs> that would have made it better. Come on. Uh, but Bam Bam Bigelow literally says that he's going to set Psycho Sid on fire. He said this. And you know what that means? Murder. Uh, he's gone forever, bro. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> set him on fire. He's gone forever, bro. No more Psycho Sid. And he's from Jersey, so there he's got the accent down. Good Lord. Uh, the roadie introduces Jeff Jarrett onto the stage. The band plays his theme along with the pre-recorded song. So you got, like, Two things playing freaking Jarrett's honky theme. Uh, Jarrett spells his name multiple times during a long ass promo and keeps doing that obnoxious. Ha ha! God, I hated that. They finally hit the song, which for all of you that don't know is With My Baby Tonight, the only song he ever did. And Rhodey is nowhere to be seen. Uh, spoilers for that one, I, I won't get into it yet. Uh, but Jarrett does a cartoonish job of lip syncing. He actually gets cheered, 
and then he craps on the crowd, and he leaves. <laughs> it was weird. He then uh, They then cut away to a commercial for SummerSlam in Pittsburgh, because when I think summer, I think Pittsburgh. That's just... <laughs> that... The, like, that's just an omen for how that show is going to go, by the way. God, I gotta... Save it. We gotta, we gotta review that and War Games. All it's just, like... Man, next show is not going to be good, people. I just... It'll be funny. It's not going to be good. Just like this one. Todd Bet- Pettengill interviews the crowd asking about Jarrett. It's a mixed reaction. Nobody cares. Uh, Hen- next up, man, we got Henry O. Godwin versus Bam Bam Bigelow. Good lord. I don't think they call him Henry Godwin, by the way. They just keep referring to him as the hog farmer. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> Godwin comes off the second rope and misses a knee drop. Bam Bam pins him for the win. What a lame-ass ending. Godwin then teases throwing the slop on Bam Bam, but he can't walk because he hurt his knee so damn bad. Then Bam Bam leaves. One and three-fourths Uncle Dave's. Not even average. Generous. Yeah, this was just crap. Uh, I will say I enjoy Bam Bam's new entrance with the fire, but that little skip jump he does in the ring is a little weird. Bob Backlund... Well, he, used always do a moon, he used to always do a cartwheel, so it makes sense. Well, the cartwheel is one thing, but this is like, he does like a pump th- like a pump jump thing in the ring. I don't know. It's weird. Uh, Bob Backlund is creeping on kids in the crowd. He's supposedly campaigning. This was creepy. Anyway, to the back! Again, with Todd Pittengill. He's interviewing Shawn Michaels. Michaels keeps calling Jeff Jarrett Goldilocks. That was fun. <laughs> Next, we get uh, probably the best match on the card, I'd say. It was Jeff Jarrett defending the Intercontinental title against Shawn Michaels. Jarrett's got the roadie in his corner, obviously. The roadie comes out and talks up Jarrett for, like, ever before he finally comes out. Miss McMahon's microphone breaks on him at one point during the match, and the King loves it. Uh, when when Vince finally gets his audio back, he blames King for it. and says, probably has some, You probably had something to do with this. Like, nice save, McMahon. Uh, Michaels goes for sweet chin music, but the roadie chop blocks him from behind uh, when the referee isn't looking. Then Jeff Jarrett hits a crossbody off the top for a two count. He goes to whip Michaels into the ropes, but Michaels reverses, and the roadie accidentally trips Jarrett. And then Sean hits the sweet chin music for the win. Tons of pyro goes off for the win. He then goes and kisses a hot blonde in the front row. So, lucky him. And he clear. By the way, he clearly has a type. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> uh, note. Uh, I, there's a guy. Well, yeah. I said these two uh, really wrestled great against each other. This was the best I've seen Jarrett look all year. But then again, he was in there with Shawn Michaels. So I gave it three and one fourth Uncle Dave's. Good show. By the way. This is better than Razor Ramon again. Oh, God. Yeah, I know. Thank God. I, I love Razor, but he, those two did not go well together. Um, as I alluded to before, uh, I believe right after this match, Rody and Jarrett grab their crap and leave, never to come back. Well, they came back later, but, you know, not for a while. But anyway, to the back with Barry Dodinsky. He's in the babyface locker room pimping the Shawn Michaels t-shirt and sunglasses combo that you can order right now. The click is front and center in the locker room as Shawn Michaels goes in there for a big hug and he gloats with him. Uh, the, the click, by the way, includes Aldo Montoya. He is front and center. Him in that Power Ranger reject costume. (laughs) But now Doc Hendricks is absolutely losing his crap backstage, claiming that Jeff Jarrett and the roadie got in each other's faces. The roadie punched Jarrett, and now they're locked up in their dressing room together. Sure they are, Doc. But next, this match. It was uh, for the WWF Tag Team Titles. Actually, not bad. It was Yoko Zuna and Owen Hart with Mr. Fuji and Jim Cornette in their corner. They took on the Allied Powers, the British Bulldog and Lex Luger. Uh, Red Rockets shoot off for the Allied Powers on the stage, blowing up right above the ring. I thought that was pretty cool. Yokozuna gets knocked onto his butt in the corner, and he sits right down onto Owen's foot. And Owen gets mad, and he gets in the ring and shoves Yoko. And then Yoko shoves Owen onto his butt. 
Vince McMahon calls Owen the, quote, black sheep of the Hart family. Uh, eventually, by the way, they make up and nothing comes of them shoving each other. And <laughs> Jim Cornette looks like he just avoided having a heart attack. Uh, Owen Hart. Mm, or... <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm going to have a heart attack because oh, they're, they're heels. They're heels fighting each other. You can't have heels fighting each other. You got to have a baby face fighting the heels. They got to come out of a box. <laughs> Where's my burger towel? Oh, Wendy's. My <laughs> wow. Uh, Bulldog and Owen wrestle great against each other until Bulldog backdrops Owen. Owen doesn't rotate enough, and he lands right on his face and his shoulder. Uh, Cornette looks like, like, Cornette's, like, right in front of the camera behind Owen. He looks like he just pooped straight through his pants, like, when he saw this. Like, watching, like, obviously we knew Owen was fine, like, in retrospect, but, like, watching out live, I would have had a heart attack. <laughs> Uh, Yokozuna charges into the corner, misses, gets dropped with a back, su a double back suplex. Uh, Luger makes the cover, but the ref is distracted with getting Bulldog out of the ring. Owen hits a double elbow off the top to uh, Luger's back, and then he attacks Bulldog. Yoko hits Luger with a leg drop, and he gets the pin for the win. Champions retain. Note, I said, this has been this pair's best outing yet. I actually enjoyed this match. And I thought the Allied Powers were, were a good team that should have lasted a little while longer. But uh, Pretty sure this is about the end for them. Yeah, it sucks. I gave us uh, two and three-fourths Uncle Dave's. So almost three. Next, we get to the main event. This is the moneymaker, ladies and gents. It's a Lumberjack match. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Lumberjack match for the WWF title between the defending Diesel and Psycho Sid. He's officially Psycho Sid at this point. Vince McMahon literally calls the Lumberjacks beef. He says, look at that humanity, that beef. And I was like, oh, sweaty men. Yeah, I was like, what the hell, Vince? Like, he just full on outed himself. Uh, this, <laughs> this was something I had to note. There's anything wrong with that. No, I'm not judging him. Undertaker's uh, creatures of the night, as they called them, are shown sitting at ringside for some reason. These are the people that look like they belong in the Adams family. No Undertaker all night, by the way. So there's that. Uh, Sid's mullet is in full form here tonight. Must have knew they were. Hell going. yes. He uh, got it all trimmed up for Tennessee. Diesel uh, comes to the ring with Shawn Michaels, and Michaels nearly gets pulled into the crowd by the fans. Like he has to like pull it. He's like walking, smacking hands. And then you see him get yanked into the crowd, and he has to, like, run away. That's how much they love this dude. But Vince calls him two dudes with attitude. Once at the ring, uh, at the, the ringside, uh, Diesel does the click salute to Bam Bam, which shocked me. When Sid is thrown into the baby faces, they just shove him back into the ring. The heels do nothing to him. But when Diesel gets thrown into the heels, they beat the crap out of him. And then the baby faces have to save him. Diesel's head gets thrown uh, on the heel side of the ring at one point, and they just pummel him. At one point, Diesel does a plancha out onto the heels, which blew my freaking mind. <laughs> that was well, nuts. I told you, he invented X Division. He said he told everyone that. Yeah, right? Hey, he did do an arm drag at one point, and the crowd in TNA blew up. So there's that. And they chanted, This was awesome, which was weird. Arm drag. Hold number two, five, seventy-two, and and uh, ninety-one. Anyway, uh, Mabel pulls Diesel out at one point, and the heels beat him up. Diesel kicks out after a power bomb, and then reverses another power bomb attempt. Sid jumps out onto the baby faces, but it fails, and Shawn Michaels dives onto him from the top rope. Diesel goes for a jackknife, but the Million Dollar Corporation just run in and stop him. Sid attacks Diesel, goes into the ropes, gets hit with a big boot, then Diesel pins him for the win. Yes, he won off of a big boot. All the baby faces hit the ring. And we know he can powerbomb Sid, so there's no excuse for that. Yeah, I was like, the hell? Did they like tell you, hey man, we gotta go home now? And he was like, quick, big boot! Uh, all the baby faces hit the ring and celebrate, and the heels just argue amongst each other. The lights go down, and sparks rain from the ceiling. Notes, I said, decent match, but I can't believe Sid lost to a big boot. 
two and a half Uncle Dave's. I like how, like, basically at the end, you can clearly see, like, Sean Waltman trying to do the Wolfpack sign to everyone. Yeah, yeah. And, like, it's like a little kid. It's like, do it with me, do it with me. You can kind of see it. <laughs> like, dude, you look like a fool, man. Oh, man. Well, he, I mean, at this time, he was trying to graduate from bag carrier. He yeah, was, that's true. It was him and Aldo Montoya. Like, he was the guy carrying everybody else's duffel bags into the arena. Hey, they'd they'd be about to recruit Triple H, so I saw him at ringside. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he couldn't man. be in there with him though. He's a heel. Yeah, he's a heel. Can't break kayfabe, mother effer. And when he does, you gotta bury him, and fire him all. We got him. Boil him in oil, sell the fat for soap, mother effer. <laughs> We've abused the hell out of that impression tonight. But anyway, yeah. So that was uh. In your house, the last three matches were really good. Or, well, pretty good. Other than that, crap. Pure crap. So... 1995 for you. Yep. They just, like, there was no undercard in 95. None. It all sucked. I don't know. It, it, you know it, who was out there on, on the Lumberjacks, though? We didn't mention it. it was Techno Team 2000. Oh, that's, I mean, that's who that was. I saw Eric Watts. Yeah. Who was the who's the I other mean, guy? I really don't know. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I re- I Techno te- Team FN2000. Oh yeah. You remember I texted you and I was like, I see Eric Watts. Yeah. <laughs> I was really uh, shocked. Uh that freaking sucked. Uh apparently Oh, he was with uh Chad Fortune, who apparently here, Watts was named Troy, oddly enough, and Chad Fortune was named Travis, and Techno, by the way, was spelt with a K, for those of you that did not Because know. hell yeah. Yep. Wearing silver smocks and tight Zubaz. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> you put, I had to throw that tidbit in there. Put 2,000 in there and they'll be over. There you go. They wrestled two more matches on TV the following month, but disappeared from television until reappearing at In Your House 2 as a Lumberjacks. Oh, man. So this was their their big return. They were out there with me and Mountain Rock. Hell yeah. And Dude the Dumpster Josie, Adam Bomb. Man, that's a who's who right there. Hell yeah. By Sparks the way. Plug. God. Yeah. By the way... I was unaware that Duke Drozzy was ever a babyface. Yeah, that's all he was. I thought he was a heel. I Nope. Well, <laughs> screw me for not following the, the, the illustrious career of the dumpster. Well, you should go back and do your research, sorry. I really should, I guess so. He, him and Mantar, I gotta get, you know, more educated. <laughs> well, that was a, a turd. Three turds in a row, how about that? Good grief. Well, um, God, what's next? I know we got, uh, like I said, we got um, SummerSlam. Then we've got, uh, and I'm, I, I swear, I'm telling you, I'm not looking forward to that again. I've seen it in the past, and I didn't like it as a kid. Not going to like it now. And then I've never seen Fall Brawl 95. So, I don't know. We'll have to... Uh, Wait and see how that one is. You you told me it sucked, so I'm taking your word for it. It did. Well, I believe we also up next have to watch. Uh, or uh, when when is that? Uh, no, not quite. We are not quite up to uh, the next ECW show yet. There's only two, so the next one is November to remember. We got a while. I, well, I, we'll remember it, all right. Yeah, I, I I know you're you're waiting with bated breath to watch another ECW <laughs> show. Oh, man, I want to kill myself after watching that. <laughs> well, uh, you just uh, hold off on that until November. Remember, you might uh, you might regret killing yourself before you watch that. So, But all right, <laughs> uh, next time around, it'll be bigger, but it will not be better. WCW Fall Brawl, uh, War Games, and SummerSlam 95. God help us all. The SummerSlam 95. Oh, yeah. Uh, when is the rumble, by two, the way? Two words, Isaac Yankum. Uh, yeah. The rumble this yeah. year's? Yes. 
Uh, two weeks. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out when uh, when the when Kyle and I are going to have to record it. Okay, yeah. So you and I will have a will record next week, and then the week after will be Kyle and I reviewing Le Rumble. So that should be much better than all of this crap. Hell yeah, Seth Rollins is going to win it all. You heard it here first. I'm calling it. Well, now you just jinxed him. So good for you, Greg. I swear to God, if he gets uh, eliminated right out the gate, I'm texting you like, what is wrong with you? Quit it. All right. Well, thank, thank you uh, for joining me on this uh, journey through the devil's yeah, anus. I, I, I think you're welcome. Yeah, well... Screw you for making me watch GCW again, but... You know. Yeah, well, i got to catch the number nine train back to the devil's butthole. So, we'll see you all next time. Uh, I think you gotta, I think you got to transfer in Harlem first. Oh, my God. 105th Street. Yeah. All right, we'll see you all next time. Later! <sighs> Later. This has been a Drama City production.